Okay, we're ready for number five of the six building blocks of tefillah, and that is the messages behind each chilek, each part of davening of our prayers. So what we really want to accomplish here is that we're going to mekayim, fulfill the definition of chazal, which is tefillah is kavan asalev. Tefillah means my mind is engaged in the words. Kavana, kivun, target, focus. Lave the mind. The mind is focused. The mind is disciplined. So in order to help facilitate that for our children, what we want to do is get away from, let's say, saying the words that I don't understand, which Hasf becomes rote reading and then Hasf meaningless exercise in not understanding what I'm doing. And then as my mind matures, I start not enjoying or liking or hating Hasf Shalom davening. Uh, we want to get away from that and constantly reinforce simple messages before we get to Pasha Pshat, which is number six, simple messages that are contained in each chilek of davening. And each time that we've done a certain amount of eon, of learning in detail the particular chilek of davening, we will add that part of the davening onto our regular uh, prayers so that gradually we're adding on more and more of our davening as we learn more about each part and that way it becomes Kavana Salev, my mind is focused and ho hopefully even more than that it's actually endeared, enjoying and appreciates what we're saying. So to start this off what we're going to do is look at Moida'ani. Um, most of what you're uh, going to hear is again part of the Living Filler Manual um, all the six areas which we all uh, covered originally, so all the, the definition and the mitzvah to daven, the avoda shebelev, the context of tefillah in the midst of loving Hashem, um, why the siddur and the five goals of tefillah. You'll find this in the Hagdama, in the introduction to the manual. And the six parts that we're now looking at uh, is the second uh, section of the same manual. Uh, so all this is actually delineated, it's all listed very clearly um, in the manual itself with a number of footnotes and sources. Uh, so we are up to number five, so the messages are related there as well. So in number five, we're going to start with Murda'ani, the beginning is a good place to begin. Uh, can't begin much earlier than that. So the first thing a Jew says when we wake up in the morning is Murda'ani. Uh, what are we thanking Hashem for? Murda means thank you. Ani, I am. So the actual translation really means I'm a thank you. What am I being thankful for? Uh, so this is a platform, as each part of davening is going to be, a platform for discovering what are we grateful for? What are we being uh, grateful? What are we saying we're happy for? And have the children come up with the list and write it out. Oh, you're happy for your head? You're happy for your hands? And if they don't say that, ask them, are you happy for your nose? Are you happy for your teeth? Are you happy for your hands? Are you happy for your fingers? What else are you happy for? And help develop their minds by asking them questions. Remember, Ishamid Boy, someone who asks questions, Yidlena will draw out of the mind of the child because the kid has it in there. Uh, we are here to be melamed on our children. Melamdim is Lashon Moilid. Moilid means to cause, to give birth. How do we do that? So we looked at the, the Matsudas David in Perak Haf Gimel Pasuk Haf Dalet. In Mishle, in Proverbs, which says, a melamed is someone who's moilid hochma belave ha talmid, someone who gives birth, causes to give birth wisdom in the mind of the child. And how do we do that? Ask questions. What else are you grateful for? Are you happy for your clothes? Are you happy for your spine? Uh, your eyes? Your eyebrows? So some of the children say, What are my eyebrows for? Uh, so we'll, let's look into that. Let's find out. Um, are, are they just for aesthetics or are they protecting our eyes from dust as indeed are our eyelashes etc. There's a lot, of, a lot of openings here to help the children understand why are we being moida and then when we, as we progress through the words ani lefanecha, I am a thank you in front of you Hashem where's in front of you? Hashem's everywhere so no matter where I am no matter where I wake up Hashem is right there waiting to hear these words Hashem I'm a thank you in front of you Melech, in control, supervises every det detail. Chai means alive, vikayam, and constantly maintaining. Hashem is mekayim, the whole universe, constantly maintaining the entire universe for me to serve Him. 
So, hi, alive. Hashem, you are real. You're alive in my life. And what am I thanking you for? Shehechazata bi. You returned it in me. And this is what you want to help the kids come to. What else? When we wake up in the morning, what are we grateful for? We had a bed to sleep on. That's good. What else? Oh, there was air to breathe during night. Sometimes it could be a very stuffy room. A um, person has to get a headache from a lack of oxygen in the room. Uh, what else are we grateful for? And eventually, they will come to it themselves. Oh, we're grateful for our neshama. And that becomes a brief discussion. What is a neshama? So in terms for children, um, you can use a simple marshal of a battery. You put a battery inside a toy. Um, and the toy runs beautifully. Take the battery out, what happens to the toy? It's dead, it's nothing, it's doimem. Uh, there's nothing there anymore. Also, oh, in a certain way, the neshama is the battery that, I'm just giving you this as a simple marshal, um, that gives energy, gives force, gives life force to the person. And when Hashem takes the neshama out of a body, the body is left doimem. Uh, if the children are a little bit older, you can get into uh, something that's a little bit more abstract in explaining that Adam, do you remember we said that Aleph, the first time it appears in the Torah, is in the word Elohim, and therefore, according to the Vilna Gon, Bavakama Nun Hei, um, Aleph is therefore defined by Elohim. Elohim is the definition of Aleph. Aleph, therefore, is the one power, that's what Aleph means, one, that gives power to Aleph, all the thousands of manifestations of powers. So, Aleph in the word Adam, is really the Elohim that's in Adam. And Dam, as you know, means blood. Blood, medically speaking, is the life force of a human being. And in that sense, when Adam dies, how's that happened? The Aleph, which is a Kaddish Baruch Hu, inside the person, it's the Neshama, inside a person, that Hashem is Nefachta be that you breathed into me, Kaviyachol, and was the Arizal from the Zaya, that um, almost as though the, the glass blower, when he fashions the shape of the, bla, of the glass from the blasts of wind that come out from his lungs, it's almost as though it's his essence that's being breathed into the glass, so that the glass is actually shaped by the internal essence of the glass blower. So, in that simple a metaphor, what we're saying is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nefach Tabi, He breathed through my nostrils uh, the breath of life, Nishmas Chayim, the soul that lives forever, that Neshama, Kaviyachol, so to speak, is a Chelek Eloka Mimal, it's really almost literally part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak. So that means to say, when Hashem removes the Aleph, the Elohim, the Neshama, from the human being, what's left? Oh, Daim, just man. So man is made up of Dam and Aleph, we're made up of flesh and blood, and the one item that you could argue is the icon of life is the blood, which is the nefesh, which is the soul of a person um, in his physical um, part. So take out the, the real soul part, the neshama, you're just left with doim, inanimate. Uh, dam is, is blood, adam combined is the human being, the physical, and the and the neshama. So the battery that Hashem is removing, so to speak, is not the battery is dead, that's why the muscle is not perfect, but it does mean to say that HaKadosh Baruch has removed that part of him from us and therefore the body is left dead, uh, buried in the ground, but the neshama lives forever. So every time we wake up in the morning and we're saying, Shechazata uh, bi nishmasi, you have returned into me my soul, um, what are, we, what are we saying? Well, obviously on the surface we're being grateful. So we could say a quick message so far is, thank you Hashem for returning my soul. Bechemla Raba Emunasecha. Bechemla means with, with uh, compassion. Hashem, you didn't owe to me to return my neshama. Oh, so when you return it to me, uh, what's that a proof of? Raba, great, abundant, Emunasecha is your emunah. Hashem's emunah? What does Hashem have emunah in? So, without translating it as belief or faith, but it really means, Amen, I agree this is true, it's certainty, it's conviction. Um, what's Hashem's conviction? What is He convinced of? And who does He have emunah in? Rabbi emunah, sech, great is your emunah in us, in me. What's the proof? That I woke up this morning. I had no contact when I went to sleep last night, so the fact that I woke up means that you haven't given up hope in me being a better me, 
improving on yesterday, uh, building on my marriage with my children, with my career, whatever it is that uh, uh, my spiritual growth, wherever I still have room to improve, you haven't given up on me being able to do exactly that. I have still a contribution to make internally to myself and externally to those who we influence in our lives. Oh, Rabba Imuna Secha, great is your Imuna in, in me. So that's the Hemla, that is really the compassion. Now, this may be a, a bit too esoteric or abstract for some of the kids, but by asking questions, who does Hashem have Imuna in? What does that mean? Who does Hashem have Imuna in? And then we talk about what's, the, what's Hashem's Imuna in us? Why does He trust us? What does He trust about us? Oh, that I can improve myself. So we're grateful in the morning that you return my neshama. And then there's another message. Thank you, Hashem, for not giving up on me. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me another day, for believing I can change the only person I was put into this world to change. So here you've got two very simple messages. We'll sing Moide Ani every morning. And the way I, I like to suggest doing this, especially if this is first grade, is that you would actually write out either on a flip chart, or if you have it, you can download it very easy from a Duff writer type of program, Hebrew English program, onto a smart board. Um, and you'd, you'd put the words out in large print. Moide Ani. Lefanecha. Melech, and I have a large margin in between each line, Chai, Vikayam, etc. And the reason for this, you put in the Nikud, you put in the voweling, um, and we'll sing it every morning. Just turn over the chart as we sing it, um, and then we'll use the chart as a platform for discussion. Moide from Hoida, thank you. Ani, I am a thank you, literally. Lefanecha, in front of you. Where are you, Hashem? What do you mean in front of you? Hashem's everywhere. Also, I'm always in front of you. Melech, uh, in control, as we discussed earlier. Hi, alive, you're constantly relevant in my life. You're always there for me. Vikayam, uh, etc. And then, um, as the children are learning, if they're going to learn the grammar symbols for the different parts of speech, that's when you can have, in front of the Lama, you put the grammar symbol for a Lama, two or four. Ha, you or yours. Um, Melech is a noun, so you put the symbol for a noun, etc. So you would put the symbol on top and you ask the children what are the symbols for each of these and they will tell you and then even if you can, get them to come up and, and uh, if you want to just make the outline of the symbol and they colour it in with a colour crayon or, or a, um, a pen. But the idea is that you're having the children pay attention to the details of the words because similar to Chumash Mishnah Gemara, every ois really counts. And the fact that a word would be written one way or not that way, or modified, um, shows that there could be halachic ramifications, there could be legal ramifications for that fact. So cause that's why we take our Torah so seriously, because it's perfect. Um, so we're allowed to assume that if it's written one way and not another, there's a reason for that. And by helping the children break the words down, as we learn about the meanings, in here, in this particular case, we're talking about gratitude as one meaning and belief in myself because you believe in me. That's, that's all self-esteem based on reality that you, Hashem, get breathed into me, Tzalem Elohim, that I am Tzalem Elohim. And I woke up today because you want me to be here. You haven't given up on me. How much more so I shouldn't give up on me. These are two massive lessons. So we'll sing Moedan and Lefanera to the end and then we'll say one line, thank you, Hashem, for believing in me. Uh, we might sing that for a few weeks or we might change it after a week or two and change it to thank you Hashem uh, for returning my soul. But the idea is that have the children come up with the conclusions, the messages as I'm calling them, so that they're the ones buying in, they're the ones who are realizing, hey, this is a message, this is a real message inside Moda'ani and it fits the five goals. I'm praising, I'm being grateful. I, in this case, that you can't see any, necessarily any particular bakasha, any particular request, but we do see how much um, we love Hashem by showing Him that you don't owe me my soul, so thank you, I love you for returning my soul. I thank you for giving me my life. I thank you for making me a Jew. Uh, and then once we turn it around to the very last of the, of the possible meanings uh, in the goals of tefillah, Hashem, you love me. We can see in Modani, it's glaring, it's screaming out, of course you love me. The biggest proof is that you, <laughs> that you love me is you returned my soul this morning. So th this is, a, a, I'm giving you one example of how when teaching filler, um, we're going to teach the words, ask about the words, bring out a message, and we're going to write inside our, um, we actually, ha inside the, we have a siddha, which we color-coded to the, 
This is a color-coded sitter to the four banners of Rabbi Winder, so that when the children are breaking the words down, um, they will color code the words. So uh, the children will, will see here, where, this is already Shemona Esrei, um, this, is, this is where it's color coded. In your manual, you've actually got uh, examples of different messages that we can bring out. Again, we're not talking about taich. We're not up to poshup shut, the simple meaning or translation. We're not up to that. Uh, right now, we're simply uh, verbalizing an English line, phrase, message that is one of the meanings in the Moda'ani. And as we're going to progress in a few moments, through the other brachas as well. So each time we are singing out loud a particular chilek, we're going to also sing out an English meaning of the word. Not, not translation. We're going to get to that. Um, we are translating the words as we go through this, but uh, right now as we're learning tefillah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say a quick English message so that the children have a sense of what am I doing? Oh, I'm praising, I'm thanking, I'm requesting, I'm admitting what's owed, uh, what I owe to Hashem. I'm admitting how much I love Hashem and how much He loves me. These are the messages we want to constantly bring out of the davening. Uh, so moving to the first bracha we make in the morning, and you always ask the children, get them to do all the thinking. What are we thanking? What is the first thing we do after we said moita ani? And they're going to say, oh, Nagel Vasa, we're going to wash our hands. Why do we wash our hands? Um, and what's the bracha we make? Uh, we're washing hands to get rid of the tumor. That's a discussion. There, uh, there are more and more books coming out about the perush and filler that can help uh, teachers who want to use those as resources. Uh, but right now, we're, we're, we're discussing simple messages in each chilek of davening. So, al netilat yadayim. We've already looked at Baruch Atta, and we'll put it up on the on the board itself, and we and we'll be singing this every morning. Baruch Atta, Hashem, Yudkei Vavkei El Akenu, Malach, Haolam, etc. Um, and leave enough gap so that we can fill in the grammar symbols if that's what you're doing, because that helps bring attention to the parts of speech so children will understand, oh, the definite article, um, so they put the symbol for a uh, hey, the uh, alam is a noun, let's put the noun symbol for that, melech is also a noun, um, el lokeinu, el means power, oh, so that's actually a verb, we'll put the symbol for a verb, nu means us or our, in this case el lokeinu, oh, so that means uh, you are our power, so uh, we'll put the symbol for the nu, um, this is all from the yellow banner, so these are, are ways that we get the kids to pay attention, we'll touch the words, we'll learn about the meaning of Baruch, increase, Ata, the whole discussion we had just earlier on. And after we finish, Melach Ha'olam, Asher, happily, Kiddushanu, set us aside, made us special, happily made, Hashem was thrilled to make us special. The mitzvot of how? With his mitzvahs. Um, Vitzivanu, and he commanded us, he instructed us, Al, about or on neti lachadaim, the lifting up of our hands in reference to washing our hands in the, mor in the morning. So this becomes a simple message. What's one message? Ask the children, what should we be grateful to Hashem when we say al neti lachadaim for? What should we be grateful for? So the children will come to it on their own, first graders, second graders, very easily. Oh, our hands, very good. Um, let's, let's learn a bit more about our hands. So at this point, um, I might introduce the children to um, a video. Uh, it's a DVD, actually, um, from Shimshon um, Halperin. He's the one who's put out the, the DVDs on Designer Perfect. And you'll find in here, it's called The, what, the Miraculous Workings of the Human Body. And uh, he has Rabbi Pesach Krom Shlita uh, giving an interview with a number of Jewish doctors, from doctors, who are specialists. Here's a picture of one of the doctors. A uh, specialist in the specific area of the anatomy of the human body. And you will click on the DVD along a uh, shelf of books. One has the spine, one's on the kidneys, one's on the muscles, one's on the nervous system. Another one might be on the eye, another one might be on the teeth. And what will come up when you click on that particular book is an interview of Rabbi Pesach Krohn with a from doctor who's describing to you the Nifla Sabaira, the wonders of the Creator in that particular anatomy of the body. So this might be a good place to bring into uh, discussion, um, our hands, and what gives us the ability to move our hands and our fingers, and how do we interface with the world? Oh, al yadei. That's an interesting expression, that's a Hazal expression for how we interface with the world. Yeah, you interface with the world through your hands. Um, and then, 
uh, if you want to play a, a, a game where the children would tie their hands behind their back um, and uh, ask them to start describing the functions they can no longer do and start listing them. And this way we start to deepen our appreciation of our hands because that's what we are saying every morning. It's one of the messages contained in that blessing. Thank you, Hashem, for my hands. I can do Netilat Yadayim. What else are you grateful for your hands for? Oh, you can write. What would happen if I couldn't write? What would happen if I couldn't type? What would happen if I can't drink with my hands? Oh, someone would have to do it for me. So what's wrong with that? Oh, I become dependent on other people for almost everything. Oh, I can't play ball. Um, I can't put on to fill in someone else to have to put it on for me. They all start discussing together why are we grateful for our hands that we're saying every single morning the same bracha. Every single day we wash our hands for, for uh, bread, we're saying the same bracha. Also, you know, according to Vilna Gom, we don't pass them like that, but according to Vilna Gom, we actually say, I'll netilat dime for coming out of the bathroom with Asher Yatza every time. There are so many reasons for being grateful for our hands. Let's verbalize it. Let's bring it out so that we understand that what Al Netilat Yadayim is really a headline that our sages wrote in the Siddur as a platform, a springboard for getting into the discussion of all the things that I would have spoken to Kaddish Baruch Hu for 1,300 years before the Siddur thanking him in the morning for my hands, thanking him for water, which we'll get to in a few moments, we're still on the hands. So, uh, in a discussion about my hands, muscles, nervous system, uh, the nerves at the end of my fingers, what would happen if I didn't have nerves at the end of my fingers? Oh, has for shalom, I would touch something hot and, and I wouldn't realize it? Or why would that be dangerous? Has we could burn ourselves without even realizing we're burning ourselves, has for shalom? Help the children start talking about the sensitivity of our fingers and our fingernails and why they protect our fingers at the end of our hands. And this helps to bring out that every morning when we are going to do a quick Hazara, every do it, we're gonna daven. And we're, we're thanking Hashem and we say each time, thank you Hashem for my life, for my neshama, thank you Hashem for water, thank you Hashem for, for my hands. What ends up happening is that you're reinforcing every day Kavana Salev paying attention to what I'm saying. My mind is engaged in the words coming out my mouth. And, I, and now, if you ask me as a little child, what am I grateful for when I say this bracha? He, he's got a discussion. It's not, I don't know. I don't even know what the meaning of the words are. No, we've, we've discussed this again and again in the classroom and we reinforce the conclusions of those discussions every single day. And as we learn a little bit more of tefillah, that's the tefillah we're going to add on to davening so that there's no rote davening that's really taking place with no understanding. It's constantly building on our understanding of what we're saying. And this way, we're uh, consistently hand in hand with the definition of tefillah, which is Kavana Salev. So, Al Netilat Yadayim, let's talk about water. So, ask the children, what else are we thank thanking Hashem for when we say Al Netilat Yadayim? What are we pouring onto our hands? Oh, water. What is water good for? Um, and help the children come to the answers themselves. What, what, why do we need water? What's important about water? And get them to talk to you and discuss and put their hands up. Oh, I need it for washing. Good. What else? For drinking. Excellent. What else? Um, one kid eventually will come up to, well, you need it for transportation. Say, excellent. What's the example of that? Oh, rivers. Oh, very good. And ships. Very good. Uh, what else do we need it for? Oh, you need it for rain. Why do we need rain? Oh, you need rain because the rain actually helps the food grow from the ground. Oh, uh, the trees suck the water up through the spine, the trunk of the trees, and spreads it through the rest of the body of the tree to the branches, the leaves. Oh, so uh, all these incredible mechanisms to take the life force inside water to provide fruit, vegetation and help the children bring out all these different benefits that we gain from water. And then let's look at what the word for water is in Lashon HaKadosh. Oh, Mayim. What does Mayim mean? Well, they'll say water. So you ask them, is it singular or plural? Oh, it's plural. So what's the correct translation? Oh, waters. Oh, why, why is there no word in Lashon HaKadosh for the singular water? There is no word. It's always plural. Why? Well, you ask yourself a simple question. Is water one state or several states? Water is constantly changing. Mayim can be liquid, can be solid ice, can be vapor, gas. It can be somewhere in between, sleet, snow, hail. Oh, interesting. 
So you can't, and, and what, what's the substance? What's the contents of all of those? Oh, liquid, water, vapor, water, vapor, uh, ice, that's water, sleet, oh yeah, it's really water, oh, uh, snow is water. All these are different temperatures based on the immediate surrounding environment that acts upon and forces the water to change its state. Water is that special liquid that constantly takes the shape of the container it's contained in. And I'll help the children, let's, let's talk about water cycles. Now, you could say, hey, we're off subject. No, we're not off subject. Kavana Salev means pay attention to the words. What am I being grateful to Kaddish Baruch Hu for? Because tefillah is an excuse for a relationship with Hashem. Tefillah is a platform for let's get into a dialogue, talk. And what's the first part of the dialogue? Sheva, Haida, and then get to the Bakashas. In the Surah of Shmon Esrei, it's Sheva, it's first praise, and then we go to Bakashas, and then we end off with Haida. That's the Surah. Oh, so really all of davening, as we're going to see as we make the progression through davening, is really preparation for the ultimate part of tefillah, which is Bakasha, because that's where it gets really unique and specific, tailored to my needs. I'm talking to you, Kadosh Baruch Hu, directly about my needs in Rafainu, in Barachenu, in Shema Kaleinu, in each bracha I've got an opportunity to talk about Atta Reinel Adam Das, my relationship to learning and the need for Chochmah and Bina and understanding, wisdom. Um, each one of those middle blessings of the Shemon Esrei is the real zenith, the spritz, the, the, the top of the mountain which we were climbing through all of the rest of Davening. Right now we're still in Shavach, we're, 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 we're praising Hashem for the reality of His beautiful world. Thank you for water. What are the other benefits of water? And this brings us to the whole discussion about the function and, and workings of water. So I'm not saying you have to do this here because you might want to do it in a different part of the, of the classroom when you're learning the science. Uh, but let's get into the water cycle. What is a water cycle? So help the children understand um, what are clouds? What are they made of? Oh, water. Very good. What's rain? Oh, it's water. What are the rivers and the oceans? Oh, it's all water. Um, what's the relationship between them all? Oh, you've got snow up here on the mountains? Oh, yeah, that's water as well. Um, and ask them, um, what can you tell me about this picture? We've got mountains. We've got a river coming down the mountains. Oh, here's a lake. Oh, it feeds actually also into the ocean. Here you've got rain and you've got clouds. Why have we got three clouds? What's, what's, what's happening over here? And why have we got an arrow going down, another arrow going up? What, what, are, what are we talking about? And help the kids come to this on their own. If you want, do an experiment with them where you actually boil up water in a see-through pot with a see-through lid. It's made of glass. And after the water, you see it boiling, um, open up the lid slowly. And what will come out? Oh, steam water vapor. And what will happen to the inside of the lid? The children will see the water droplets on the inside falling down because of gravity. Now, why didn't those water droplets come down while it was inside on top of the pot? Oh, because the temperature is very hot in there. And the moment you open the lid, the coolness of the outside air makes the water droplets on the inside of the lid condense and come down as rain. And you're showing them, they experience, they see the workings of rain. There, there's water, heat from the sun. Here is actually underneath the pot. But the water is, has heat applied to it, causes vapor. When the vapor rises and it gets cooler as we go up, the, eventually the droplets in the clouds will come down as actual rain. Now, where's the rain going to be deposited? On the oceans. Not much help there. We've got plenty of water. Oh, on the mountains. What will happen there? Well, you've got the snow caps. We can talk about snow separately, but here comes the water down the rivers and, and it provides transportation. It provides um, nutrition for the ground because you've got the nutrition in the rainfall, providing all the nutrition to the topsoil for food to grow. Oh, so you've got all these fields of the farming land. Um, there might be a, a river that goes around the town and we need water to provide for the taps and the plumbing and the uh, disposal of, of waste. So in the oceans, is it, is it, is it um, uh, drinking water or is it salty water? Oh, it's salty. Uh, so how, how does Hashem get the salt out of the water? Because you can't drink water when it's salty. Oh, the heat from the sun, 
make a little sun up here, uh, forces the water to rise and in doing so leaves the salt behind. And now the water is cleansed, so to speak, of the salt and goes into the clouds. The wind power blows the clouds uh, further away towards the mainland. And as the mountains force the clouds to rise, cools, comes down rain. And this becomes the water cycle. You've got water in the oceans, evaporation, clouds, wind blows the clouds to the mountains, mountains forces the clouds to rise, condensation, precipitation, rain comes down, and the cycle of the water now comes back down to the earth, uh, and, and you've got the whole watershed taking place, the whole water cycle taking place. If you want the children, um, Again, all you're doing is every time you're going back to Al Netil Al Daim. So, how big is our thank you on a 0 to 10 scale? How much do we owe Hashem on a 0 to 10? 0 is not much at all, it's nothing actually, and 10 is the highest. So, what number do you think we should be saying thank you to Hashem for when we thank Him for water? How, how useful is water? How beneficial is water? How many good things come out of water? So, let me ask you honestly do you think first, second, third grade? Children can understand this? Of course they can. Do you think they're going to be bored out of their minds? No. This is, what we're doing really is the following. And this is based on Rav Volba. You'll find the Zriya Binyan in Chinuch, where he says, slow down on the davening. There's no reason why children should be davening so much way before Bat and Bar Mitzvah. Now, this is, this is a very problematic statement to make. Not controversial with intent, but it's problematic because Rav Volba is basically saying, saying uh, the following. He puts this in in writing and it's very, very scathing and it's, it's painful. He says, what, we are, what we're doing to our kids is making them daven so much more than they need to be before Bat and Bar Mitzvah, when in reality, because Chazal say tefillah is kavana salev, my mind is engaged in the words, kavana, focus, discipline, lave of the mind, in the words coming out my mouth, on the words I'm saying in my mind that come out my mouth, uh, based on the text in the davening which is written Baruch HaKadosh, if my mind is supposed to be engaged in this and it's not, and I'm doing this for 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, says Rav Volba very frighteningly, uh, we're training our children to hate davening. We're training our children to disconnect from Kodesh Baruch Hu. And even though they're young when they're starting to do this and they don't know how to explain that they're bored or that they're not really getting anything from this or that they're reinforcing their dislike for davening, because they don't understand what they're saying, even if they're doing it as a rote and a mechanically every single day, and they're doing it with Islavas to some extent, the problem is if we don't hook into Kavana Salev to understand what I'm saying and why I'm saying it and the meaning behind it and the appreciation that I am declaring behind the words I'm saying, if we're not going to engage the mind of the child, we're preparing by default. We're planning, not with intent, we're planning for the child to disconnect as he gets older. Those are literally the the, uh, the words of, of Rav Volba, that the Einish, the, the consequences of what we're doing is on the shoulders of the adults who are forcing the children to say way more than they need to be. So Rav Volba says, cut back. Let's get them to be able to daven Shemon Esrei by bat mitzvah and bar mitzvah. You don't have to be at eight, nine years old. I know it's a race, but there's no one, there's no pressure. And the pressure there is artificial. It's not real. The Torah is not requiring of it. It's not part of the chinuch of the child. There's no chinuch that says, Please teach the child to daven these words without understanding what they're saying. Because then that's not chinuch, because the chinuch is, I'm supposed to train in the mitzvah, and the mitzvah is kavana salev. So it's kind of reverse, uh, the, 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 the problem is being reinforced as opposed to released. We're reinforcing the problem of tefillah beloi kavana, beloi lev, without the mind, without the heart, without the emotion, without understanding. So, again, I'm not saying this as a kitruk, as an accusation, I'm saying it as an observation. These are not my words, Rabbi Volba, you'll find it in Zriya Binyan, uh, in Chinuch. Uh, the quote is in full on page 47 in your manual, Living Tefillah. So, uh, Zriya Binyan, Chinuch, page 46, he writes with very sharp language describing the danger of teaching children to dumb without understanding. So, the words are, But Tefillah, Tzrich Aliyah, Neshama Shel Yehudi. Tefillah needs to be the soul of a Jew. If we force a child to daven outwardly and that becomes mechanical. It's an external mechanical robotical davening. And perhaps even sometimes hit the kid for not davening or not davening properly. We make prayer something that becomes distasteful and repugnant to a child. That's for Shalom. Later on, 
כאשר הוא כבר בחור מבוגר, once he gets older as a teenager, a young adolescent, אין לו שום קשר נפשי עם התפילה. He has no intrinsic connection to davening, because it's all external. And the external part of davening, without knowing what I'm saying, is reinforcing the external, the hergel chitzoni, as he calls it, which means I'm reinforcing the disconnect, because I'm not connecting. So once again, אין לו שום קשר נפשי עם התפילה. There's no intrinsic קשר, connection, to תפילה, which is supposed to be a relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. And then, והשמה רובצת על ראשם של ההרים, the blame, lies squarely on the heads of the parents להתפלל בגיל מוקדם מדי. To force children to be davening way earlier than they need to be. So what Rav Volba is basically saying, it's the pressure that we, the adults, have put on the children that then gets transferred into the school system and, and, and forces the principal and the rebellion to have to go faster than we would ordinarily want to and need to. And guess what? What are the consequences? The child has spent 2,000 hours davening or disconnecting. So it's a serious problem. So says Rav Volba, cut back. And the suggestion here, based on Rav Volba, is let's keep adding on to our davening that part which we understand and appreciate because we've talked about water, al netilat yadayim. And what ends up happening is really like this. Instead of, let's say, 30 minutes in first grade, I don't know if that, I'm just throwing out that number, make it two minutes of actual davening. The rest of the 25 minutes that have been freed up, we're going to learn about water. We'll learn about hands. We may even spend, spend two or three days or, or a week or two learning and looking at fascinating DVDs that help us appreciate the workings of water. There's a lot to discuss. And in doing so, the kids are only saying two minutes of davening a day, and then a week later, we're going to add on the next bracha. It might be Ashayatza. Wow, we can go to town on that one. Then we can spend at least a week or two, at least, learning about the words of Ashayatza and what we are describing are the workings of the inner body, the digestion, elimination, assimilation, um, expulsion of the waste in the food. There's so much we're going to discuss in Asher Yadza. And now the, the children are saying only, let's say, Moda Ani, Al Nitilat Daim, Asher Yadza, and Akai Neshama. And how, how long is that going to take? A minute? And all the rest of the time we would have spent saying words that they wouldn't understand, now is freed up, all that time is freed up, to learn the davening bi'ion. And we're not talking about necessarily bi'ot filler exactly, or even taich. We are taiching each word, as we learn in the morning. Thank you, Hashem. I thank you. I am a thank you in front of you, etc. Yes, we are taiching the words every morning, and we're giving a one-line message. Thank you for my neshama. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for water. Thank you for my hands. So uh, this is really the format. We're saying a little bit of davening, all the time that we would have spent rote davening. Uh, forgive me for using that terminology. I'm only using it so we understand what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to free up to learn and make tefillah living tefillah. It's tefillah's chayim. It's really alive. And now we add on the new chilek that we've learned about. And then another chilek, another chilek. So that over a year's period, you could get up to 20 minutes of davening. But it's kvana salev. The children know what it's about. We could stop at any point later on in the classroom and refer to a part of the davening. Anyway, so that's the format. Going back to water. Do you think this is going to be boring or are the children going to be endeared to this? So, for example, if you're up to it to create little labels um, for each one of these stages, there are actually eight, uh, there are ten stages on this for the water cycle. Uh, you've got here transportation. So, if you've taught them what's happening over here, um, oh, the clouds are being transported, they're moving. How are they moving? Oh, because of the wind. So let's put transportation here. Um, here we've got river runoff. Oh, who can tell me what they think um, the river runoff is? Oh, you think it's over here where the river runs off uh, from the lake down into the ocean? Good, that's called a river runoff. And you'll teach them this, this language. Um, here you've got another one, it's called evaporation. Who can tell me where they think evaporation is taking place? Oh, can you see evaporation? There's an arrow up here coming off the lake. Um, oh, number two here is also evaporation. Okay, very good. You want to put it there? Good. Evaporation. The water is rising into the clouds. Um, the seas are oceans. Oh, which one's that? Oh, good. Number one. Fine. That's number one. The sea is the ocean. Um, you've got temporary storage. These are technical terms. You can call it just a lake. Oh, yeah, there's the lake. 
That's number eight over there. That's the lake over there. And then you've got evaporation. Oh, there's another evaporation. We had one here. Oh, here's evaporation too, number six. Very good. You've got evaporation from the oceans and from the lakes. Very good. Um, and here you'll be teaching children new vocabulary. And it's all in the context of water, which, is, which are the details of the headline of Al Netilat Yadayim. Then you've got precipitation, which is a fancy word for rain. So you put up all these labels, so eventually what's happening is the children start to understand the workings of water. Now you go to, back to our constant conversation, which is Elohim. When we say Al Elokeinu, you are our power, you are Elohim, the power of all powers. Uh, remind the children with the picture card of, of Elohim, and then ask them, so who's the power behind all these? Oh, it's Elohim. So what we might end up doing is taking the picture card of Elohim and we might move this down a drop and, and put this up here. So Hashem, oh, you are the one power behind all these powers. Why are you doing this, Hashem? Because you're kind. What else? Oh, because you love mankind. Is it the mountains you love? Is it the oceans you love? Is it the land that grows all the food that you love? Um, what is it that you love? You love the pipes that you pour water into? What is it? Why are you giving us all this water? Oh, because you love us. And why do you love us? When do you love us the most? Oh, when we learn your Torah, when we do chesed with each other, when we're, we're being kind to each other. Oh, so what you're bringing out is expanding the mind of the child to appreciate that water has many applications and we don't go a day without saying thank you Hashem for water. I love you, Hashem, for my hands. I love you, Hashem, for the water in my life. And I love you, Hashem. I know you love me because of the water that you constantly give me. There's much more we can say just on, on the subject of water alone. I'm just going to give you a couple more examples. Um, you might put up a picture for the children of the major rivers of Europe. This is one of the continents of the world. And ask them, you know what, can you see we've colored in blue all the major rivers? What can you tell me about this picture? So the kids might not know what I'm getting at. I might ask them, can anyone tell me if they see the chesed of Hashem? Yeah, you do. How do you see the chesed of Hashem? Oh, you see rivers all over the place. So what does that mean? Oh, you'll never be too far from a river. Why do I need rivers? Oh, you need a river for transportation. Oh, to provide water at different places. And what transportation do you need it for? Oh, transportation of goods and merchandise. Oh, why do we need transportation of goods and merchandise? Oh, because in this area they grow flowers and you don't have them in another area. Oh, so how are we going to get them from one to another? Oh, ships bring shipments and containers, very large containers. Put up pictures of docks and containers. And one kid will say, oh, we got one of those in our backyard. And it help build up in their mind that we are endearing, deepening the impression and penetration of the appreciation of water. Not for the sake of water, but because it's Baruch Atta. Increased is my awareness of you, Hashem. When I recognize Asher Kiddushan, you lovingly, happily made us different from all the other nations. You set us apart with your mitzvahs and you actually command us to say thank you for water. To use water for washing our hands in the morning to remove tumor to go into the mikveh to remove tumor, and help the children understand where do we see water in our Torah? Oh yeah, the mikveh. Um, so what do we talk about mikveh? We can talk a little bit about mikveh. Uh, how does a non-Jew become a Jew? Oh, they have to go into the mikveh. So says the Baal Shem Tov, imagine the power of the, of the water of the mikveh can turn a non-Jew into a Jew. The water of the mikveh, that immersion, is what activates the entrance of a neshama into a non-Jew, so says the Baal Shem Kaddish, imagine if that is what water of the mikveh can do to a non-Jew, to turn him into a Jew. What does water do of the mikveh when a Jew immerses in water? <laughs> the Tosefis Kedusha, the increased Kedusha that is added into the neshama of a Jew when they are metahed themselves. So the whole concept of Tara, you can mention the mikvahs in the base of Mikdash. Uh, you had to go to the mikveh before entering the Harabayas, um, into the Azara. Uh, talk about the mikvahs that are discovered on Matsada. Some of the children might have actually been to Matsada. There's lots of branches that you can branch off onto that are not tangents. They're not completely irrelevant and uh, 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 not, not directly related to water. No, it's all about water and help the children become endeared. How... How much more will their kavana be when they're saying I'll net it out your dime in the morning and we sing out loud, thank you Hashem for water, thank you Hashem for our hands. 
So I'm just giving you these uh, simple examples of how we can turn a bracha and make it much more meaningful, and this becomes living tefillah. It's alive, it's relevant, and every day, it's not I'm saying the same words, I'm training my mind to appreciate and increase my appreciation, Baruch, increase my appreciation and my awareness, my realization of Hashem's presence in my life, Hashem's kindness, constant kindness, overwhelming kindness in my life, all because it's a product of His love for me. Those are the messages that we're constantly reinforcing in the mind of the children. And this is the best age, first grade, second grade, third grade, to reinforce it. It's not too late to start this later. What you're doing is you're helping bring the world into the mind of the child. You're talking about transportation, evaporation, talking about clouds. You're talking, you don't have to be a genius in science to figure this out. Most of this is, is in the integrated part of the curriculum. Uh, it's laid out there. But uh, we're bringing it into the building block number seven in Living Tefillah in a very serious way because so many parts of davening refer to the workings of water, the workings of gravity. Uh, as you see the earth as it turns around its own axis and you'll, you'll notice how the sunlight disappears as the earth goes around its own axis and then it's dark on that side then sunlight beaming from the sun uh, lights it up again and it's you actually can see the rolling the light is rolling away and in out in out darkness in out it's a beautiful metaphor but it's actually a definition of what's really happening so our davening can come much more alive when we realize Hakarish Baruch Hu, you are helping me through the words of tefillah describe your perfect kindness that's taking place in the world all the time with the workings of water um, I'll close on this particular example where there's an excellent book you can show the children. It's called The Hidden Messages in Water. It's by Professor Masaru Emoto. Uh, absolutely fascinating, where basically what he did is experiments all around the world with water. And what he basically did is he took water from different lakes, rivers, etc., oceans, and then he would place them in a simple uh, glass plate and talk to it. Yeah, it sounds crazy, right? Talk to it. And then, after he said one line like, uh, I like you, I admire you, well done, or, or in something negative, an insult, a sharp word, an unkind word, then what he did was he froze the water so it became a crystal. Then he put the crystal under a microscope so that you'd have a, a glass plate of water here and the same water taken from the same source in another glass plate next to it. To this glass plate, he says an unkind word, to this one he says a kind word, puts both of them into the freezer and then at a certain temperature um, actually photographs the crystallization of the two. And what he shows you consistently, and these are the pictures in this book, mind-blowing, consistently, whenever the water crystal crystallizes from a kind word, you see symmetry. You see such perfect design. You look at the crystallizations of kind words uh, like this is German for thank you, in English, thank you, thank you in Chinese, uh, French. Each one of these is a thank you, is a kind word, gratitude. And then if something is said which is sharp, unkind, insulting, or nivel per Rachmaninslan, you get these distortions in the same crystals. The same water in one plate is a beautiful, exquisite design, and in the and the same water that was drawn from the same place that was spoken to unkindly has a crystallization that is distorted, corrupted, uh, ugly. This one says, I will kill you. And you, you see the distortion is remarkable. And this is consistent. What is basically showing and demonstrating is that there, in the physical world, the elements in the physical world respond to what we're thinking and saying. And think how when we say a bracha on water, shakul niyabidvara, versus not saying a bracha at all, or saying a bracha but without thinking about what I'm saying. So what he's basically, and this is a non-Jewish professor who's bringing out with incredible photos um, of the beauty of how water crystals respond to kind words. So this is, uh, enables us to realize in the workings of water, when we make a bracha al netilat yadayim for washing our hands or shahakol on drinking water, we affect the bria, literally. 
on the physical plane, before we get to the spiritual world, so to speak, that we are affecting with our Dibur. Because Dibur and Dava came from the same three letter root. Dava means word and also means thing. Because what creates the thing? Oh, the word. And man is called Medaber. And Kalal Yisrael, we're the Medabrim, we're the ones who speak to Gadosh Baruch Hu through Tefillah, we're the ones who affect the physical world the most, and that is a direct result of what and how we speak and how we daven. And the purpose of, of speech, for more than anything else, is Tefillah and Torah. Kind words, encouragement, chesed, uh, kind words of encouragement is, is a very deep form of chesed. To lift up a Jew, lift up another person, to smile at them, Jew or non-Jew, Oh yeah, that, that's a very powerful thing, but that's before you unzip your mouth and actually say words, you affect the physical people around you, you affect the, phys you affect the physical environment. So these are ways that we can show the children that water, mayim, changes, because mayim is plural, it's constantly changing in response to the physical environment. It will take the shape of the keli, the cup or the vessel that you pour it into, the lake, the, the ocean, and it will also change in the way you think and act and talk in its presence. So th these are ways to help children become much more endeared that when they're davening is very real. So I gave you some examples of how we can elaborate on al netilat yadayim. Uh, let's move to the next bracha, Ashe Yadza. We're going to go through, we'll write it out on the board, Baruch, Atta, etc. Ashe Yadza, Es, Adam, Mechokhme, etc. The whole bracha with the gaps so that the children, as they're asked to uh, figure out what's the grammar in each word, Adam, oh that's a noun or a verb, oh it's a noun, so let's put the symbol for a noun. Yadza, what does that mean? Oh, designed. Uh, is that a noun, a verb? What is, oh, it's a verb, let's put the uh, symbol for the verb, which is a round red circle. The noun is a black triangle, etc. So the children are identifying the parts of speech and they will come up with their own questions. They really will. I've done this in first grade. I was blown away by the questions they'll come up with by paying attention to the details in the words. So, for example, we get to What's the wisdom? So we'll go, I'm just giving you examples and you'll find this in your, in your manual. A lot of this has been uh, scripted and with a lot of sources. Asher is Loshan Ashrei. Oh, okay, Ashe Yatsa. Yatsa means design. What's the difference between Yatsa and Bara? Bara means he created. Yatsa means he designed. What's the difference? You look inside the vocabulary words, you've got, you've got the words there, you'll see Yatsa, we've got a picture of a design of a house. Ya, uh, bara means to create from nothing. So that's the difference between the two. Yatsa, you create from something. So you're designing, fashioning from a material that already exists, whereas bara means to take something from nothing. Only a Kaddish Baruch can do that. Um, so Hashem Yatsa, Hashem, you designed Adam, man, Bechochma, with wisdom. What's the wisdom? So it's a Gemara in Daf uh, and base in Brachas. Uh, Toysavis tells us there, what's, what's the chokma that Hashem created man with, designed man with? Um, so he quotes the Medrash Tan Chuma, that the concept of chokma here is that Hashem prepared all the food before he made man. Oh, interesting. Hashem created the oceans and the earth. From the oceans and the earth, he, so to speak, made a dough, and mina afa, he created man, mina afa, v'yipach ba'ah, he breathed into him a chelik elokamimal from the soul, so to speak, of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, Nishmas Chaim, a living soul that exists forever. Chaim literally means life, so it means in all times. So uh, man was created after Hashem first prepared the world with everything he needs. That's amazing. So now in Hashem Yatza, we can talk about what did Hashem make first for man to enjoy and be ready to walk in and, and into this new home, palace, Olam Hazeh, and enjoy. So you talk about water, you talk about gravity, you talk about light, you talk about sunshine, you talk about heat, you talk about wind, you talk about rainfall. There's, there's so many elements in creation, all that are, are there in order to provide food to grow from the earth. So that Hashem was Metakin Mazoino Yisav Shal Adam, he prepared all the food items that man needs in order for him to digest, to give him energy, to continue living, all prior to his arrival. So you give a simple marshal of a guest that you're not going to invite at 6 p.m. unless you have already in your mind planned, keyword, that from, from the morning and sometimes 
a few days before, depending on how big the feast you're preparing for your guest, you, you are saying 6 p.m. because you have calculated in your mind that's when you will be ready, having prepared all the food and the furnishings for your guest. Oh, but over here, HaKadosh Baruch created the universe and planet Earth and all the landforms and the oceans and the rivers and the lakes and the mountains and the valleys and the canyons and the topsoil and the vegetation and the birds and the fish and the animals and all the elements in creation were all preparation for the sixth day. That Hashem designed man with wisdom. What's the wisdom? He planned all this before, before the guest arrived. So comes along the bracha, Asher, happily, Yatsa designed, Es Ha'adam, Es, we're going not into too much detail now, is an abbreviation for everything. Whenever you see Es in the Torah, it's always being moist of something. You're all, it's always telling you something else. There's something else there. Es um, helps me know, Oishis um, Dara Kiva, I think it's Perak Tes, uh, the Aleph Taf, Es, is actually the abbreviation for A to Z. Aleph through Tav. HaKadosh Baruch created S. Before he created everything else, he created Aleph through Tav. That's why in the first pasuk of the Torah, Breshis bara elokim, Esa shamayim ve'esa aretz. And you might ask, that's not what Hashem created first. He did not create the heavens and the earth first. He first created the Aleph base. And with the Aleph base, he said words which created the heavens and the earth. Well, you look close at the words, you see, yes. Breshis bara elokim, et ha shamayim ve'et ha aretz. In the beginning, he created Aleph through Taf, and with those letters, Aleph through Taf, he created the universe. So the concept of S is always being most of something. Forgive me if I keep switching from Ashkenaz to Sfad. Et means Hashem created the entire Aleph base, with it the entire universe, and with that, he created man, and he did it happily. Now Hashem has no emotions, but it's a description of understanding how much he was so excited, Kaviyachal, so to speak, so thrilled, so happy to create man and to build a beautiful world in preparation for his arrival. Berchokma with wisdom. Uvaravo, and he created from nothing. In him, Nikavim, Nikavim, Halulim, Halulim, holes, holes, cavities, cavities. Now, in English, what would you usually write? Holes and holes, cavities and cavities. Why does, and this was not my question, this was a, a question that was asked by Akiva Gershon, uh, six, seven years old. Uh, Rebbe, why does it say Nekavim, Nekavim, Halulim, Halulim? It should say Nekavim, Unekavim. There should be a Vav there. Halulim, Vechalulim. Why is it that the words are missing a vav to, to connect them? It was a brilliant question. Brilliant. So I didn't know the answer. I called my Rebbe on the spot, picked up an Eretz Yisrael, uh, gave me the answer on the spot, and I told the children. An amazing answer. In Diktuk, Diktuk is a very important word, means grammar. Mm, very painful word. Diktuk is actually two words. Duck, duck. In Lashon HaKodesh, there are no mistakes in Lashon Kodesh. Whenever you have a, a word which has a two-letter root doubled over in the word, duck, duck, it means it's the most intense version of that item. I learned this from uh, Rabbi Dr. Svi Inbal. It's an amazing insight. It's consistent. Uh, kilkul, kal, kal. When you take people seriously, that's covered. Covered means I take your dignity. I appreciate you as a person, as a human being. I appreciate your virtues. So you feel I take you seriously. That's covered. Covered is heavy. Light means I don't take you seriously. I take you lightly. Even in English, you say that terminology. So what is a kill call? Kal, kal. If I take your covered lightly, I take you lightly. I don't take you seriously. That creates kill call, destruction. Kilkul means destruction because kilkul is the most intense version of kalkal. Diktuk is duck, means narrow, to pay attention to the smallest possible detail. Liduk dek means to pay attention to the smallest detail. What we're helping the children understand, you can put any word in, in Lush Kodesh works this way, kaskeset, like the, the scales on a fish. It's like intense, it's covered with scales. 
um, Adamdem is deep red. Yirak Yirak is deep green. You'll find that in Perak Yudalad, in, in Vayikra, in the descriptions of the different types of Saras. So the concept here is amazing. Lidakdek means to pay attention to the smallest detail. When you're training children to pay attention to Shrashim, two and three letter root words, you're teaching them prefix and suffixes. Then when they look at Tfila, Chumash for sure, but Tfila, Ashayatza et Adam Bechochme, Uvaravo, Nikavim, Nikavim, Chalulim, Chalulim. I must have said that tens of thousands of times without thinking for a second. Yeah, where's the Vav that connects Nikavim, Unikavim, Chalulim, Vechalulim? So the answer I gave from my Rebbe was amazing. It was mind boggling. In Diktuk, in Lashna Kaidesh, if you want to separate items, you add the Vav to show that they're separate but connected. So Nakavim, Vunakavim, or Unakavim, would tell me that they are part of the same system. But whenever there is an unlimited number, uncountable number of an item, you drop the Vav. The Vav tells me that this is separate, and this is separate, and now they're joined, and now they're joined, and now they're joined. Another one, another one. I've got a pencil in my hand, I've got a crayon in my hand, I've got an eraser, I've got a key, and, and, and. So each and tells me that this is an isolated item now joining with another. But what happens if you've got unlimited number of items working together? There's no Vav, you drop the Vav to indicate unlimited. Really? How many holes in the body? Well, on the outside, there's seven openings. You've got the two eyes, the two nostrils, the ears, the mouth and the face alone. You've got two other openings in the body. But now you look at how many other openings are there? Oh, every pore in the skin. And you bring up in the classroom a photograph or a video about the pores of the skin. I know it's porous that actually a mosquito will uh, stick its straw, its tongue, tubular, through, directly inside your pore. It won't miss, and it will suck out its breakfast or lunch, I mean your blood, and go on to uh, someone else for lunch or supper, and it will first make a little bit of an area around it at the end of their tongue, tube, they will actually inject an, an anesthetic so that you can't feel them pulling out your blood and when the anesthetic wears off a few seconds later uh, you're going ah! and the mosquito is already on to supper with your learning partner next door uh, guess what? he's going through your pores. How many pores do you have in your skin? Millions! How many openings, Nikavim, Nikavim, do you have between each capillary and each vein? Each cell is an opening into the cell, out of the cell Oh, unlimited. Billions. Oh, so the Lashon of Ashayatsa is that there's unlimited holes in your body. Nikavim, Nikavim, unlimited cavities. Cavities, unlimited? Well, you've got the heart, the spleen, the kidneys, the lungs. Oh, one second. Every cell in your body is another cavity. How many cells are there in your body? Billions. Billions, billions. Oh, uncountable, unlimited. Drop the Vav. And now you know you're talking about an unlimited number. Help the children. You're not dictating this. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring it out from you, but I'm sharing the information of how we're going to teach Asha Yatsa. And every day as we, we learn it, we might add a number, a number of new grammar symbols that the children figured out belongs to a particular word. A little bit more discussion about the workings of Asha Yatsa. And certainly Asha Yatsa is an amazing platform to discuss digestion and talk about food and its true value. Um, let's talk about the value of food. Why is food important in our lives? Taste, good. What else? Texture, what else? Oh, it gives you energy. How does it give you energy? And we'll talk about what do we do with the food in our mouths? Oh, we chew it. Why do we chew it? Um, oh, because that breaks it down. Why does it break it down? And you talk about, depending on which age group you're talking to, uh, oh, there are enzymes inside your saliva. What do the enzymes do? Oh, they help break the food down. Oh, so where does digestion start? In your stomach or in your mouth? Now, Pavla will tell you it's in your eyes. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate. Okay, uh, but if you uh, understand that the real digestion starts in the mouth, I know the eyes start your mouth salivating, but let's start with the mouth. Oh, the enzymes in your saliva start to break the food down. So the more you chew, 
the less or more surface area is exposed to the saliva. More. Also, the more you chew, the easier it's going to be for your stomach to digest the food because the digestion starts here and it's more efficiently activated through the chewing process of increasing the saliva enzymes to the food area, surface area, and each time you chew, you cut the food, increase the surface area of the food, and therefore its exposure to your enzymes in the saliva that breaks the food down in your mouth. And the longer you're chewing, mm -hmm, the less you enjoy the food or more. Oh, the more, why? Oh, because you're exposing your taste buds in your, on your tongue to the food for a longer period of time, and mm, swishing the chocolate, mm, dark chocolate, around your mouth, <laughs> chewing and savoring the taste. Oh, food has the value of enjoyment, pleasure, which stops here. And from this moment onwards begins the real value of the food the nutrition. But there's a lot of junk, unfortunately, in a lot of food. So how's the body going to decide what's junky and what's useful? Oh, digestion. We'll break the food down and send it through the bloodstream. The bloodstream will now carry all the carbohydrates and all the enzymes and all the uh, amino acids and the oxygen and all the different nutrients in the food and will decide. Amazing, amazing where it goes. Does it go to the cells to renew energy or is this reject, waste? Ugh, we don't need this, it's junk. Let's get rid of it and it goes to a different part of the body and is rejected, expelled. And Asheyatsa is talking about digestion and rejection. Assimilation of food that becomes part of the human being so we're oived Hashem with the food we eat, that's powerful, and we reject the unhealthy parts of the food, known as expulsion, elimination. We go to the bath and we don't even talk about that, but in Ashayatsa we are. Because we say, Galu Yidua, Lifnei Chisa Kivadecha. Galu Yidua, Lifnei Chisa Kivadecha. Galu revealed, Yidua and known, Lifnei in front of Chisa Kivadecha your throne of glory. Where's that? So quickly look at Hagiga Daf Yud Beis. Uh, seven heavens. Where's the throne of glory? Well, first you've got to go through the heavens. It takes 500 years, non-stop travel, to get to the barrier of the first heaven. Then it takes 500 years to get through the barrier till you reach the beginning of the second Rakia. And then You've got to do another 500 years to go through that barrier till you get to the next heaven, seven heavens, until you've gone through all seven, that's 3,500 years of travel, plus all the barriers, 7,000 years, plus all, until you get to the lowest foot of the lowest, Malach. And then you add all that previous distance, what, it's a metaphor, to, till you get to the ankle of the lowest Malach and then to the kneecap, and then to the thigh, and then to the torso, the shoulders, head, and then the horns, and now you're up to the next level, malach, angel, so to speak, spiritual power, energy, and what ends up happening is, you're talking about in, uh, um, uh, amazing distances, until you get to the top of the highest malach, who's just below the regline, the legs of the kise kivodecha. You have nowhere else in your davening where you say these words. Revealed and known before the throne of your glory is, whoa, hold on, what incredible information are we sending to a Gosh Baruch Hu that no one else do we talk about? It's so important, so significant. Wow, this is, let's hold on, what's the message? That if any one of these openings or closings in your body was not functioning properly, it was closed when it's supposed to be open, open when it's supposed to be closed, in reference to elimination, an expulsion of waste that is essentially poison and gets flushed away from the body? We're talking about that? Yes! EF Charlotte Kayim Afilu Shayachat. It would be impossible for us to exist for one hour, one moment. The body would internally poison itself if it couldn't expel the waste. What are we talking about? Can you imagine what's going on here? I'll give you a simple marshal, a very simple metaphor. Mom calls you up, kibudeng, 
and makes requests. Look, uh, darling daughter, my dear son, uh, this is your mother speaking, and therefore what I'm about to request from you, it's not a big request, but I do request it nevertheless, and it's a mitzvah, dear Raisa. It's a mitzvah from the Torah, chapter 20, Parshas Yisrael, to listen to your father, to your mother. Um, every time you come out of the bathroom, could you please call me and just let me know everything's okay? Uh, sure, mum. Okay. Harini Mekai Vincent Ansei, dear Raisa, shall keep it aim. Hi, mum. Yes, darling. I just want to let you know I uh, just came out of the bathroom. Everything's good. Thank you. I'm very relieved to hear that. Thank you, darling. I um, appreciate the call. Okay, 40 minutes later. Uh, Mom, hi, darling. Everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. I just want to let you know that I came out of the bathroom and everything, uh, everything's good. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, an hour later. Mom, yeah, I just want to let you know. Ooh, 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 one second. Why does Mom want to know this? What is she saying? Micromanaging your life? No, she's just asking you to report. What she, why is she interested? What is she saying? What's the message? What is the message she's saying? She cares about you. Oh, at what level? At this level? Really? Akadosh Baruch Hu, you love me so much? You want me to share this level of detail of a function that I don't even control? It's automatic? My body is digesting this food on its own. I don't consciously tell my body what to do, how, how fast, where and when. Uh, uh, this is my body on cruise control. And you're telling me that you're so interested in the smallest detail of my life down to the elimination and expulsion of waste? That's how much you want me to talk to you? Karl Heimer, how much more so does Hashem love it? when we talk to him our own words and thank him for my health, for all the cells in my body. Thank him for my life, for my wife, for my health, for my wealth, for my spouse, for my house, for all the good in my life. Oh, Asheyatsa is almost a metaphor. I have a mitzvah to say thank you a hundred times a day. And Asheyatsa is the most frequent of all the brachas. Says Mishnah Brewer, if you have Asher Yatsa and Shehakol, you want to make a bracha on the orange juice, but you just came out of the bathroom, but you want to make a bracha on the orange juice, which should you say first? Well, I want to say the orange juice, I want the orange juice. Yeah, but you owe a bracha for Asher Yatsa, so which should you say first? Says Mishra Bura, very simple, halachic, legal principle. Tadir, frequent, Usha'eno Tadir, and infrequent. You have two mitzvahs. One is frequently performed, one is infrequently performed, in relative, relative to the other one. So, Tadir Kaidim, whichever of the two is the most frequently performed mitzvah, that gets precedence over the other one. So says Mishnah Burra, we say Asher Yatsa more than Shahakal, for most of us, unless you like dark chocolate every few minutes. Uh, but uh, people like that uh, will put aside for now, they're exceptions. Yeah, Asher Yatsa is the most frequently blessed blessing. Oh, Asher Yatsa is really an excuse for a thank you to Hashem for eliminating the waste from my body. What's the message? You, Hashem, care about such level of detail in my life. And these are words which is a script. How much more so are you happy when I make a choice of my own words to be grateful for what's not easy in my life? And I'm still grateful to you. I'm not letting go of Yiddishkeit. I'm not letting go of tefillin, of davening, of bikas and mazen, of making brachas. I'm not getting, letting go of Shabbos. I'm not letting go of my from Kite and my Jewish identity, despite the fact that I'm going through what I'm going through with the wife, with the husband, with the children, with the grandchildren, mother, father, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, mother-in-law, father-in-law, chevrusa, <laughs> grandchildren, the teacher, school, <laughs> etc. Did I miss out on anything? Whatever we're going through in our lives, Asher Yatsa is a constant reminder that you're good to me. How good? You do this all automatically for me, for me to pay attention that I should be saying to you, Rabbi Shalom, thank you for my health, for all the cells in my body, for getting rid of the waste. Roy Fechol Basar. You are the healer. I'm training in reality. Whose reality? Hashem's reality. You are the healer. Chol Basar of all flesh. Never give up. No matter how far the cancer is, no matter how far the leukemia, Rachman Islam, no matter how far the heart disease, don't give up. Because every moment I'm alive is the greatest proof you want me here to change. The only person I was created to change. 
Now this is a little bit more uh, at high school level, maybe late, older, but I'm bringing out, I'll show you outside, you can bring it down to the kids by showing them digestion. It's all about elimination and assimilation. Assimilation of the good food into our cells, elimination of that which is uh, waste and poisonous to the body, and look at how we end off roife cholbasa. You are the roife because what's taking place is rufua, literally. You are merapemi because if has for can you imagine a person coming out and saying to his children, well, I just got out of a, a very serious surgery. Dad, why don't you tell us about it? How long was it? Actually, it wasn't that long. It was only a 15-minute surgery, but whoa, it was potentially going to destroy my life. Dad, why didn't you tell us about it? What happened? Well, there was this uh, surgical procedure. Uh, there was this growth in my body that uh, if it wouldn't be taken out, I was definitely going to die. It would simply poison me. Dad, what happened? I just came out of the bathroom. What? Yeah, I did number two, and there was this lump that if it didn't stay in my body, if it wasn't eliminated, I would have died. I would have been poisoned. Oh, Dad, that is so vulgar. <laughs> I got a spark who wants me to know. Ashe Yatsa is not vulgar. It can be presented in a not nice way, and we don't, it's, it's not language we talk about at the table, but it's something that is intimate between me and my maker, my creator, my healer. Because I want him to know that I recognize more and more and more every single day, about every hour or so, umafli lasais. It's amazing what you do. It's incredible. It's amazing. Billions of cells and tens of thousands of miles, no exaggeration, about 28,000 miles of veins and capillaries. If you let, put each one next to each other, one human being would be enough to, all his veins would actually go around planet Earth more than once. That's incredible. Yes. And they're all working 24-7 with this little pump that's pumping approximately uh, nine pints of blood around your body, about 1,900 gallons in a 24-hour period, three to 5,000 times around your body. And in doing so, it's taking in all the nutritional value of the amino acids and the proteins and the, all into your bloodstream with the oxygen and bring it to your cells and renewing your cells. And the healthier food you eat, the healthier your entire body is, the more energy you have, the healthier your mind and clearer your mind will be, and the less work your body has to do in the elimination of the waste. But that muffly lasis, how you make the lungs and the bloodstream and the heart pump all this around and the digestion break down the food, muffly lasis. Let's learn our shayatsa. Be'ion, open up the DVD uh, with Rabbi Pesach Kron, who's talking with a doctor who is a specialist in the anatomy of digestion. And learn the Niflas Habayra, the wonders of the Creator, so that when we say, Mafli Lasois, it's Kavana Salev, the mind is engaged. And it's not just knowing the Taich and the message, which is massive, but it's based on Let's learn what, Hashem, you want me to understand from this bracha. You want me to understand digestion. You want me to understand elimination. You want me to understand what waste is. It's the poison that you get. And there's surgery that you are the roi feichol basar. Every hour or so, you're doing surgery throughout the body to make sure it's... Get out! Get out! ASAP! In fact, it's a nisa de arisa to hold on. Uh, no one disagrees about this, that if I have the sensation to need to relieve myself, I should obey my body. You'll find it in, 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 uh, in Rambam, in Hilchus Deus, Perak Dalet, he talks about this several times. Don't even delay for a moment. That if a person has a sensation to go to the bathroom, it's his body sending a very intelligent message. Elimination is ready. Get it, get out the body. Don't let it stay. Because the whole body is porous. And if Hasfashon waste stays in there, I'm, I'm just giving you, there's so many add-ons here. There's so much to talk about on Ashe Yatsa. Uh, and I'm just giving you sampling so that you have a, an idea how we can take the brachas and every single one of them, there's so much to say. 
And we've only covered two. Anitiladaim Rashi Yatsa, add it onto the davening every day. And the davening is now only going to take a, a couple of minutes. But each time we add on a, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, guess what will happen over the years? The children will arrive at Shimon Esrei plus, knowing what they're saying, appreciating what they're saying, and the word Baruch will be re resonating, echoing throughout their day, increased, increased, increased. Because every time I say Asher Yatsa, I'm adding on to my appreciation for the previous one. So we become the first two words of our tefillahs. Maide Ani. I am a thank you. We're a Jew. A Jew of all the different terms. Ivri, Yeshur, and Yisrael. Ivri means Ava. We pass over. Yeah, we get beyond the Holocaust, start life again. Yeah, we've been beyond the, we did the Crusades, Babylonians, Persians, we did Haman, we've been through all that, start again, start again. Every has a power of other. We'll put it past and move forward. Yehudi is the main name. Not Israel, not every Yehudi. From Loshan Haida, we are thank you as by nature, by our DNA. We are Moide Ani. We're here to be grateful. For what? To you, Agadosh Baruch Hu, Asher Nasan L'chashem Elkecha. What's the taif? Thank you, water. Thank you for digestion. Thank you for elimination. Thank you for the delicious food. And all, all of them are just excuses. The ja Hashem could have made one food taste the same and no one would have been complaining because you wouldn't know different. But Hashem created so many different foods and textures and varieties of how to cook, bake, and <laughs> boil this same food and come up with different variations and, and combinations of foods with each other so that life is one delicious challenge of tasting. It's one big smorgasbord. But it's not the pleasure on the physical plane that's the real ultimate tachlis goal. The real goal is that that is there for me to one day wake up and say, Rabbi Nishleilam, you're the Makar Abracha. You really are the source of this blessing. Thank you for digestion. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for listening.